Hi, this is the 17th video on helping people study for actuarial exam 2 on financial math. We're going to look at problem 1.6.3s in Broverman. In the last video, we introduced the idea of a force of interest. We're going to continue with that in this video. We're going to find an unknown parameter in a force of interest function in its formula, making the force of interest function equivalent to a nominal rate of discount convertible semi-annually. I should emphasize before we look at the problem that that is only um, equivalent at a certain moment in time, not for all time. Here it is. On time, at time zero, time zero, one is deposited into two funds, X and Y. Fund X accumulates at a force of interest, delta sub T equal to T squared over K. So again, delta sub T is the notation for the force of interest. Here's its formula. It is a function of t. t being in the subscript is often uh, thought of as a variable in actuarial mathematics. Fund y accumulates at a nominal rate of discount of 8% per annum, in other words per year, convertible semi-annually, twice per year. At a certain moment in time, just that moment in time, the accumulated value of fund x equals the accumulated value of fund y determine k, this unknown parameter in this force of interest function. All right, kind of just like in the last video, I'm going to solve the problem in the quickest way possible first, and then I will continue talking a little bit more about what the force of interest is to remind you of that. So um, let's see, we need to set up our, our equation here. We're depositing one, so the initial amount is one in both cases the fund X is going to accumulate after five years to the value e to the integral from 0 to 5 of the force of interest, which will be e to the integral from 0 to 5 of t squared over k. I like making my k's cursive there. If you can't quite tell what that is, that is a k. That must equal um, what the fund is after five years according to the nominal rate of discount 8% twice per year. Recall from a few videos ago that the growth factor in such a situation would be 1 minus the nominal rate of discount, in this case 0 0.08, divided by the number of compounding periods per year, in this case 2, to a power that's negative, negative of the number of compounding periods, in this case, twice per year for five years, that's the negative 10 power, times the starting amount, which is one. So I don't need to put the one times there, but for extra emphasis, I'll do it. There's also a one over here. I need to solve this equation for k. All right, the right-hand side is just a number. Let's evaluate that first. Point zero 0.08 divided by 2 is point zero 0.04. 1 minus point zero 0.04 is point 0.96. I want to raise that to the negative 10 power. So press my y to the x button, then 10, then negative. Kind of odd ordering of those operations. That quantity is, you can see it here, 1.504 one, three, seven, nine, five, three. I'll go ahead and store that value in register zero. All right, now let's think about the left side. Let's do the integral. I'll do that on a separate line if I like. Don't have to, but integral from zero to five of t squared over k, integral from zero to five, gives you t cubed over three k, evaluated from 0 to 5, which will be 125 is 5 cubed over 3k minus 0. So the equation we want to solve ultimately becomes e to the 125 over 3k equals 1.504137953. I don't know why I put two equal signs up here, which is one equal sign. Solve for k, I need to take the log of both sides, 125 over 3k 
will be the natural log of this thing. I'll just put an arrow there like that. So k is going to be what? Uh, 125 over 3 times the natural log of that thing. That will be what k is if you solve for k. I multiplied both sides by k and divided both sides by the natural log of 1.504. All right, let's do that. So take the log, natural log of this thing, press my ln button right there. Multiply it by 3 times 3. I got to take 125 divided by that number, so do the reciprocal, 1 over x times 125. K is about 102. That is the answer. About 102.069, say, or to the nearest whole number, it would be 102. And that would be the answer to the question. All right, that's the answer. What is the force of interest again? I will remind you, summarize what I said in the last video about what the force of interest is. This is probably the last time I will be so detailed on it. I won't write it, but I, well, what I wrote initially last time is I said that delta sub t is the instantaneous relative rate of growth of the amount function. A prime of t gives you the instantaneous rate of growth. If we want an instantaneous relative rate of growth, we need to divide by the amount at time t. Ultimately, through integrating and exponentiating, We can solve for a of t, also a little bit of algebra. I'll let you review video 16 if you want to see those details. I already encourage you to try it on your own. Here's what we get. For a, capital A as a function of t, the accumulated value as a function of time. And I like using a different variable for my integrand up there, like a tau. Uh, to emphasize that in this, the upper limit of the integral there is the true variable for this function. That t is the variable here. So that's what the um, accumulated amount function is. In this example, a of 0 was 1. And again, delta sub t, t was uh, t squared over k. Let me write that as tau squared over k. And let me not bother putting the value of k we found in there. This becomes e to the t cubed over 3k, where k is about 102. That is our accumulated amount function in this case. If you graph it, it looks about like this. It's actually got a slope of 0 initially. You can check that. But then afterwards, it grows very fast. In fact, it's going to grow faster than any regular exponential growth function. The force of interest here t squared over k, or tau squared over k, is a positive and increasing function of tau. That's going to lead to faster than exponential growth.